Check, check. All right. We are live. Daily live stream today. We're going to work on finishing up this render of this bongo eating sour glowworms. Uh, yesterday we had it in a pretty good place. I did a couple things after the stream to figure out some stuff about ZBrush. We'll go over that. And hopefully we'll end up with a finished image probably before the hour's up. So I'm going to go ahead and save what I got in Photoshop right now. And I'll add that to the stream thumbnail just so we can show the progress. Save what we got. And then we're going to go over some light caps, materials. We're going to try to add some extra gloss to the eye. And I'll go over how to do nano brush to add the little sour chunks which I figured out after the stream was over okay. jump back into Z so one thing I did I mess around with here. If you go to the draw menu, your settings to change your camera's focal distance. If you look, the higher it is, the more in proportion your model is going to be. If you really crank this up, you can sort of get an isometric look going. I think normally, it, when with perspective turned on, it's about 35. If I push it to 28, and since he's a cartoon, this kind of pushes his expression out, really makes his eyes bulge, and I thought overall made it like a funnier composition. Okay, so before we get into doing the lighting, I'm going to delete the sugar crystals that I made. Turn those off. There we go. I'm going to solo this real quick. So we got our worms here looking extra tasty. What I'm going to need to do first is insert a flavor crystal. I'm going to insert a sphere here. I'm going to go down to initialize. What up, Jace? And yeah, thank you very much, sir. So when we come in here and we initialize this, um, it'll change this shape that we appended in here to one of these other basic shapes. And you can change the amount of geo that's on it crossed here. I'm going to change it to. 222, two, two, which gives us two on each side of the sphere. And then we got ourselves a little salt crystal. I can come in and kind of move this thing, distort it a little bit so that it's not perfectly round. And we're going to hit B and create insert mesh. Actually, New. What we really want to do is open up the Z modeler brush first. I forgot about that. So B Z Z modeler. Then we want to hit B. Create insert mesh. We're gonna append this. Okay, and it's gonna appear up here in the menu. So then when we come in here and hover over our poly with our Z modeler brush, you hit B. And then we can do insert nano mesh to all polygons. Select this guy. Oops. So that's what we're going to do to our worms. Hit frame. Find those real quick. And this is going to be a ton of them because of how many polygons we have here. And 
Now, one of the problems with this brush is that when you have a ton of geometry like this, you got to really mess around to get right on there. Look at that. Now we're creating tons of delicious flavor crystals. So then we jump in over here to Nano Mesh. Yeah, so tasty. And Pattern Random Distribution, you can change that up. And then Pattern Distribution, Don't do anything. No, it doesn't. Random Seed. Then you can change the offsets of these. This is sort of like cloning um, onto an object in Cinema 4D, if you've ever done it. Oh my gosh. So we got to pull this number way down to get our crystals there. And that actually looks pretty good right away. So that's how we get our crystals. You can change the random rotation of these. Got to be careful though because I don't think when I appended that the axis point was exactly in the middle of our geometry. So it actually doesn't rotate perfectly, but they're so small, who cares, right? So then we come down to inventory and one to mesh. Now they have been created. So I hit control shift and these are all the same uh, poly group. And so I just clicked on the worm and it disappears. Click twice and then we're going to split. Split hidden. And now we got it on its own separate layer. Rename. And we can add a material to this however we want. You about to start streaming, Jace? All right, take it off. All right, boom. This is the first real experience I have with somebody chatting on my thing. I need to, uh, Decide whether I want it to appear on this. I think the other thing I want to do with this, and I, yeah, man, I think he's turning out pretty good. He's kind of bugged out here. I think I need to do a little something with the coloring. I'm having a hard time deciding whether I want to fade in and out or just use blocky coloring. I don't know. These are like stylistic choices that I guess I need to make. I'm also debating whether or not I should keep him this color or turn him into kind of like a chocolate, like a milk chocolate looking color, like an actual bongo. You familiar with the bongo? Pretty cool animal. I was saying this the other night that we have one in the Louisville Zoo. It's really unfortunate I didn't do his whole body because these stripe patterns down here are pretty sweet, especially with this mohawk going down here. Pretty sick, but... I didn't want to get too in the weeds trying to finish these in a couple days, hopefully one a day. Eventually. Now, yeah, like a zebra horse. I'm going to duplicate these eyeballs. I'm going to inflate it a little bit. I'm going to try to make a transparent material on this so that I can just do like a glossy reflection like an eyeball really would have, like it would look glossy. I'm gonna just click on the standard brush, change it to MRGB, open up my materials. Let's see what materials we have in here. There might be a transparent one. Reflecting map, let's do that one. Gotta do color. Fill object. <laughs> now let's try to edit this material. Go to the modifiers, and maybe we can up transparency to a hundred. 
No? Zero. I think to get this active, we would actually have to change some other settings. I'm going to import an HDRI and see if I can get that to work first. See if I can get it to just reflect in the eye. Oh, well, there it is. That's pretty cool. So by coming all the way down here and dropping an HDRI in the bottom, you can start to get some reflection in there. I just need to figure out how to make it. it might just show up as transparent. Maybe I need to adjust the transparency curve. Nope. It looks like that's something I'll have to check out later. Turn it off for now. I'm going to rename it I Reflect. I think that this geo needs to be cleaned up a little bit too on the final render. It's looking a little bit too bulgy. I'm going to just do you rematch this thing? So something that I'm learning right now is that when you Z-remesh, I think also when you Dynamesh, it goes ahead and it fills the object with whatever material you have selected. I'm gonna Z-remesh it again and have it. Move that out a little bit, come back in with my AM standard. Oh man, you know it's actually pretty crazy. The one thing about ZBrush is that um if you want to paint a texture on, like I painted this eyeball on, it's based off of the geometry. Unless you UV unwrap it and stuff like that, then you have to increase it. This is at 2.8 million polys. The total thing's at 12 million, but it doesn't need to be. When you come back and clean it up, you can reduce the geometry and um, subdivide it, and then you reproject it. So that's in the cleanup stage of things, but if you're coming in here and you're just trying to do an idea, uh, it really doesn't matter. So this isn't going to be like riggable or anything like that. This is just going to be a image that I'm kicking out to Photoshop. So as long as ZBrush can handle it, then it's all good to go, which is sort of why I'm figuring out how to render directly out of ZBrush because 
once you do that, then you don't have to go through this process of UV unwrapping and kicking out to another program and then painting it in that program and then kicking out to another program and rendering it in Octane. Instead, you can just do it all from this viewport. And you're certainly limited. And I think you can send something with 12 million geo, the key shot. I'm not totally sure. That's another pipeline I'm going to look at. But for now, it's not that big of a deal. But it's certainly messy. This is like 239,000 polygons. And we're in the concept stage, right? I might need to do something about these painting on bad. I take a clay brush, freehand. Put an alpha in here. Set it to just RGB. See if you can see the polygons and the messy painting going on here. So you subdivide it again, now it's at 3.5 million. Did you watch that uh, MPC thing yet? It's really, really interesting stuff. Uh, a lot of it's technical jargon about um, ZBrush, but I think they were saying that they got up to like a billion polygons on Pride Rock is insane i mean they took this program that's already ridiculous pushed it to the absolute limit he went through uh showing the deformations for hands like rafiki well it will be there tomorrow um, I think they, I don't know if they actually talked about it. I know they used Maya, they composited with Nuke. I think they used Mari for texturing. But I don't know what render engine. I bet they used something like Gray, I had to guess. Just whatever the best is, because... They're just rendering everything at like the absolute highest resolutions. It was pretty wild seeing them. You know, they actually commented on why they made it look the way they did, saying that Favreau wanted it to feel like a documentary. And it definitely felt like that. That was his goal. He succeeded. I think, in my opinion, it lost a lot of charm. But who wants charm from a Disney movie? Really? Why are they mad? I think this is just you hanging out. I'm going to look up transparency. Be brush. Oh, is there a guy named Bob that replaced him? I didn't even read that.
looks like this is in the display settings. DPR settings. Our transparency option in the render palette is off. Yeah, turn it on, my guy. See what happens when we hit BPR. I was figuring it was maybe one of these things where it will only show when we render. I need to adjust my settings too. I think I actually definitely made them way too high. I saw that um, Bob Iger is actually going to start handling streaming ESPN and Disney Plus, Hulu. Well, look at that. What is going on there? I'm going to jump back over, pull out reflective maps, and I thought I already fixed this. What's going on? See, this is that rookie stream. And reflective map. Do it's switching this other one. Oh, this is the problem. I have M. Then fill. Basic material to fill object. There we go. Go down. Material. Modifiers, transparency, zero. Change the render settings right there at preview. I think I need to adjust some other stuff. I think I cranked up my rays. Ooh, BPR transparency. Surface is turned off. All right, again. Oh, so it's per subtool. Very interesting. I think I accidentally activate four eyelids. Take that off. Now it's activated for the eye reflections. Beautiful eye. And I'm going to jump in and set up better lighting. Serial. A little bit because I found out some stuff about that. Look at that. Kind of creepy, actually. I need to reduce the reflectivity. Bring down the metallic. Bring up the reflectivity. There's a Fresnel blur, gamma, 
interest. Looking for reflectivity color. Eh, it's not. Do I have light in this thing while I model? I mean, can I see the lights in the scene? Go oh, check it out. I just turned off the lights that I have in the scene. So I'm going to start a new one. Right there. I'm going to turn all this down to zero. We're going to go to light cap. Create new light. And this is a way that you can light your model. I'm in here. I figured out that you can give it a lot better rim controls. Yeah, all your lights are in here. You basically can turn them on and off. Um, if you just turn on one, then you can come in here and you can add a ton of different lights in here. And basically this little menu controls all your lighting options. So each one, change the strength, the shadow, all that sort of stuff. I don't know whether you want it to have any ambiance to it. I'm going to add another one and we're going to make a rim light of this one. I'm going to kick it all here and really crank up. You can see it's coming in and just hitting the side. Not the best controls, basically the worst sort of way to light something. But again, if you're just trying to get some concept art out or get something done quickly serves its purpose you can light um also with an image or bring in an hdri use that too i haven't experimented with that yet so i probably won't do it on the stream i change how strong the shadows are I'm gonna use that lighting right here. And then I'm gonna actually change my basic material too that I'm using for his body. I'm gonna make some adjustments to that. It's interesting, if you click on materials, you can see what the lighting is doing to all of them actively. This is an interesting attribute that they included for the thumbnail. Brighten them up. This stuff can drastically change colors. Activity. Um, L shading has some very interesting options. I think it's more like a fake subsurface scattering. I only have it set on one, two, or three. I think I'm gonna keep I think I should probably turn it on for tell me one. See what this looks like. I really wish that I could transparency time. Kind of frustrating for the time I'm seeing that there might be some hidden settings in here somewhere to do. That is not the result I was thinking I was going to. Unpredictable. Jump back into my. Side, crank that bad. I think this is the cool settings.
yeah, I, th I think as I go, um, I'm going to save the light settings. Once I got a good fill rim, I'll probably save that. And as I make materials that I'm happy with, I'll save those out, and then I'll have them load up by default. Um, I'm already kind of figuring out the brush settings that I'm going to use. And I needed to do things like find eyes I want. I, I worked up a Photoshop template where I can change colors to the eyes and stuff like that. That way I can paint those in real quickly. On this one, the horns and the ears are made out of a brush. And then the fur is an alpha that I got a hold of. So, yeah, I mean, eventually, hope it'll go a lot quicker. But I'm still kind of slagging through some of this. Lagging, slugging. And why my light? Oh. Intensity, we'll turn that. Best. It's actually going to take a little bit longer to render this time. Before you split, I'll uh, show you this plugin real quick. Even if this render doesn't come out that good, this plugin is where it'll just composite everything into Photoshop for you what that looks like I need to figure out the subsurface scattering wax setting because those look like they could be pretty handy stylized look Coming in really dark again. Right, so brush to Photoshop. Set what you want it to kick out and then send to Photoshop. I'm gonna go through this render process. Probably gonna have to start from scratch on my uh Lights. Something's going funky. I think on my gummy worms, I'm going to have to go in and make a subsurface What time is class at? And That is so late. West Coast time. I'm I'm going to send you something real quick. Something I stumbled across. An art that I thought was 
definitely going to do here soon. Check it out. Just jumping in here, masking everything, changing. Now, wait a second. How'd that come out looking so much better than it did in my video? Look at the transparency. Looks like I got some stuff to figure out. Your thing doesn't have sub surface scattering on it. Um, I don't think everybody does this. I think most people probably kick it to um out to key shot, which is a free renderer that comes with it. Um you can actually apply materials like metals and stuff that but probably a lot of people paint it in substance and then pull it into Cinema 4D. There's plugins that just jump it over to Cinema 4D or Maya, or Blender, I think, all in the same way that this one did. Check this thing out. Show you him. This guy, Julian, not going to try to say that last name, but he's got a great little practice here where he did a bunch of famous characters really quickly in the same sort of hard cut style. Thought it was a really well done practice. Simple, just a bus. Picking out a turntable for each one. I really like this Ganon door. Green Goblin was sick. <laughs> this comes right above his nose. I'm curious how he kicked these out. I mean, these could have been kicked out in brush. I'm not seeing any like sort of roughness pattern or anything on these. This seems like to be flat colors. Where's my SSS in here? You don't have subsurface. They basically just like do an inner glow and fake it. Dang, that came out a lot better than I thought. I just can't believe this. Could have had specular pass. Getting masked out and screened. The depth pass in here too. A little blurring for the background. So still some compositing to do. I don't see a transparency layer. Do that something that I have to turn on. renders turned on property transparency on
Hey man, if you come across one, let me know. Of course, then I gotta do like eight more steps after this, but I think it'll be worth it. I think I'm gonna do what that guy did. Um, with those characters, try to do sports figures. Never gonna let this thing die. Now it's not even showing that reflection. Bad. I mean, really, I could do this in Photoshop in about two seconds, but it's all about learning what's going on. What I should really do is chop this into a bunch of, uh, like, a really truncated tutorial where I skip all this. I don't want to add some. Bulge mark in the mouth. Look like it's really tense. Render's taking forever. <laughs> what? Cool. Aha. I guess when you put it on fast mode, it uh, it really goes fast. And it probably switched from preview to best when I kicked it out to Photoshop. I'm thinking that eyeballs probably don't have a lot of specularity to them. That wetness layer really creating a glow that I don't think. you want I feel like I got to do something about the wetness on his nose too and I really thought that I was going to jump in and hammer this out but yeah I mean they're basically all glossiness right transparent and they kind of reflect the environment but they all do have that little white specular dot in the top right corner maybe this that curve is already I wonder how I can speed up this. I think 
this is what your nose has on it. Standard brush, drag wreck, bring in. I got all my wrinkles, alphas in here. I think I have some that are gonna just be like tension. That might not be cartoony enough. Let's see what this looks like when I drag one in. Okay, here to take off RGB. Increase the intensity. I'm going to hide this again. Move this out. I can't remember what I use. Oil, metal, chrome. Edit that material. All right, I think that looks. All right, let's go ahead and kick out our. I feel like we learned a little, do too much. But no, I'm like we're getting pretty close to a final render. I don't know what's going on with my previews here, but seem to look okay. When I kicked it out, I'm just going to up the core intensity. Kick it out to Photoshop. I'll do a little bit of edits there. Add some dust. Radial fades to the background. And post this thing to Instagram.
Anyway. This is B. We're supposed to make it all the way to Z. I don't know if I can make it all the way. I don't know if I can think of 26 candies. I have to really mess with the reflection settings. I wonder if the low geometry, the sphere that's creating the glossiness on the eyeball needs to be also increased highly in the geometry to get a good result too. It might come through just as pixelated as it looks right there. First one was ant ice cream. We got sour worms. I don't even know what creature I'm going to do for C. Got to be like abnormal. Whoa. Interesting. Because it looked reflective. Ooh, chameleon's a good What kind of candy was it? Caterpillar. Pretty fun. Pin strap penguin. Super cop. Clouded. Ooh, a cotton top. I bet that. Yes. I don't know what I'm going to do with that hair. That's pretty. Ross River Gorilla. Couscous? Couscous? It's not a thing. Okay, that looks like a gorilla. Whoa. I've seen these things. Like a lemur. Plantain? Bug eyed dude. That thing should bug eyed. That's it. That's all we got for C. Chameleon might be it, man. Did they put chameleon on here? Yeah. Besky Fosek? Lyric. Camel. Happy bar. Good dog. Oh, yeah. These things are pretty great, too. I'm trying to avoid too much fur. I think it might be time to go for a reptile. Yeah, world's largest rodent. I think they eat them, too. I don't know what they taste like. Making that up. 
like eating a giant rat. On this too much. I feel like this transparency. It's gonna take a lot of experimenting to figure out what the accurate transparency settings would be. How reflective ambience need to be set lower. First shader mean add reflections. What is that? What am I gonna do about these eyes disappearing? I think the color looks all right. In terms of lighting, I put up a bit more. But what's crazy is, I think this is like just the regular, Render, I'm going to pull it out. See, there's our eyes there. So it's like, what's going on here? The best one six one six light. Might. Let's look at that detail that I was yeah. That it looks like a disco ball. Geometry is real low. Hit Alt, click, hide, divide. <laughs> yeah, severe glaucoma. That's why he's eating candy, because this bongo has been smoking weed. Help out. Lock home. They all make. Also, you can paint in layers. Something I need to start doing so that I could just change all the red, brown color I was talking about. That right now I'm kind of locked. Patterns painted. I think I can also change the ramp here. Nothing. Come in and you can change the color by holding down color pick from the here. What render set? Man.
All right. I'm going to send this over one last time. I think I'm probably done for the night. You have fun at your late class, sir. I'm going to be watching um, Netflix. Hi, man. See you tomorrow.